Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I want to go over a comment that I uh, received. I think it's a great comment, actually, to be honest with you. We're going to talk about it, okay? It's about real estate, and it's about uh, this dude's opinions. Me. That's me. I'm a dude now. All right, so I use the word all the time anyway. All right, why do so many people care about this dude's opinions? Where's the data? He's just saying things we're supposed to believe it. All right, let me stop there. So you're absolutely right. These are my opinions. I'm out here just hanging out, just a dude with a brohawk and a dream. But that's what they are, right? Opinions. And I say it's so important to get people's uh, thoughts, uh, people's uh, feelings. Um, make sure that there are other people out there like you because you're not here because you think everything's going well. You're here because you know something's brewing, something's coming, and you want to be prepared for it, and you want to be successful, right? So I tell you my stories, my thoughts, those kind of things. And the cool thing is, people could turn it off at any point. Some people don't. They wait till the end, and then they make a comment. And I want to thank you. Whether it's good or bad, it's important, all right? So let's, let's uh, another thing too, a lot of people are like, give us facts, give us data. Do you know, to be honest with you, I am way too busy. I have a job, I have four businesses, and uh, hey, I'm here making videos. I do not uh, stand behind a fancy whiteboard. I could give you all kinds of facts and data. I've been reading about them for a long, long time. <laughs> I've got a fun little library. But the f facts are, is that uh, if I was to sit there and, and try and prove to people, like someone the other day said to me, Sh you need to prove to me why I should buy Bitcoin. I said, I don't need to do crap. I actually don't want you to buy Bitcoin. I care less if you buy Bitcoin. Because you wanna know why? Whether you buy Bitcoin or not, I already know where it's going. I could care less if you make money from it. I was just letting you know. We're just having a conversation. I think Bitcoin's great. I do not need to prove to anybody why to do something. I don't need to prove to you why you should uh, look to uh, wait to buy a house because the market's gonna collapse. I don't, I mean, I could tell you all day long, hey, this happens every seven to 10 years. If you need me to write that on a whiteboard or if you need to actually me to show you on an internet, like here, look, it says it right here because Google, Wikipedia says it. And then you don't even realize how Wikipedia works and how it can get changed. I don't know how I can help you, okay? So, uh, and I get it. There's gonna be a lot of people say in the comments, hey, don't worry about those guys. I actually don't. What I do uh, worry about is people that actually uh, read comments from people that say, this person's totally wrong. I'm in the business and he's wrong. And then you look over and it's got like some name. I'm Mr. Big 213, exclamation mark. Whew, he really had to make the point, didn't he? But he also doesn't even have a picture. And the sad thing is people go, well, there's a lot of these people saying they're wrong, but they don't have a picture, they don't have their own site they don't maybe it's a bot maybe it's not maybe it's an idiot maybe it's just a i know i'm, not, I'm supposed to not say it either i know see i know i get it it's just hard it's hard because there's a lot of people out there and the sad thing is like in the comment section there's people that are bots this little computer program that are trying to rip you off and steal your money get you to go to whatsapp and give you money some bitcoin scheme and the sad thing is there are a lot of people that fall for it so that's what i care about that's what i'm concerned about people that might fall prey to a bunch of uh, bots or morons, sorry, see, and it's it's just it, that's just it. We got to sort of bring financial education to the forefront. If you want to watch whiteboard, go watch George Gammon. The guy's awesome. Seriously, he's got all kinds of intelligent thoughts and 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 notes and all this kind of stuff. And me, I'm not out here with an editor. I'm just spitballing this stuff right off the top of my head. Whew. All right, so here we go. Here's the rest of the comment. So give me a break. Now we're gonna talk about real estate. Give me a break. Okay, take one. We have a massive home deficit in this country of three to four million homes. If you actually looked at the numbers instead of standing in a field with a cardboard, <laughs> I love it. I need the cardboard. Where's the car? crap? I'm gonna forget half the crap I'm gonna talk about. If you, if you, <laughs> if, <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> If you actually looked at the numbers, instead of standing in a field with cardboard, you'd realize this housing market can't crash. Wow, this, I gotta set this down for a second. This guy, this guy must have been, has been probably investing for, let's say, six years. He's probably 26. No offense to the 26 year olds, but if you're actually 26 and you're a subscriber here, you're super smart because you're listening to some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so it can't crash, it did. And just so you know guys, everything I said about 2008, I made it up. I totally made it up, it didn't happen. Houses did not fall by 50% in locales like California, Las Vegas, New York, all over the place. And yes, just so you know, Tennessee, Oklahoma, all those states, it did fall also, all right? Everybody was affected. 
Uh, so yeah, sarcasm, truth, which we go in Ninja. Trust me, my subscribers know. And this didn't come from a subscriber, but I know it's not a bot. So I love these, these comments. The facts are dot-com crash. It actually happened 1994. The feds put like what, three or four points on all new, new home loans and, and just stifle, just smash the, uh, the new construction industry just because they wanted to because things are getting into a bubble. That's uh, because they had another plan. Uh, oh, 1987 didn't happen uh, if, uh, to uh, Brandon. If you don't remember 1987 because you're too, you weren't born yet, just read about it. It's, it's like a Black Monday, Black Tuesday, Black Thursday. Just figure one of those things out. 1987, SNL crisis, whatever. Hey, you know what? Nothing happened in 1980 either. There wasn't any heavy inflation in 1979. So here's the thing. Here, do you want some numbers? Let's give you some numbers. In Oh gosh, I'm going off a of break now. This is no editing. I'm not gonna like, oh, hold on. And let me look really smart, okay? In December of 2020, I'm pretty sure if you look at the National Association of Realtors, they'll show you that in December, there were, as of the end of December, 1.1 million homes on the market nationwide. That meant because I think the year before in December, it was 1.4 million. So let's use Brandon's numbers because he's given us numbers. All right, he says here, how can the price of anything crash when there is a deficit? Now, I don't know about you, but we, uh, I don't think we've went through this thing called like the baby boom, or I don't think we've seen like, you know, this mass population growth in the last uh, six years, but okay. So I, I just, I only think, I only think that homes are in demand because of low interest rates and because people are greedy and they want something that they shouldn't buy because they can't afford it. So they're always trying to keep up with the Joneses, buy something bigger and better, right? That's just me. That's just me. How can the price of anything crash when there's a deficit? The moratorium could put at most 800,000 homes on the market. Whoa. So let's talk about that. You gave me some solid numbers, 800,000 homes. Now, if I'm going by the Real Estate Association of Realtors in December, and I know there's more homes that have hit the market just recently uh, because that's seasonality, right? But I'm only going by the last number I checked online. Let's say it was still, let's say it was 1.5 million. You add 800,000 homes to that, that's not doubling it, but it's making it, it's raising it pretty high, right? That's darn near 50% increase in available homes. And just so you know, we're already seeing that where homes are hitting the market and homes are sitting just a little bit. I'm, I'm talking, like we went from being gone in 24 hours or 48 hours to they're on the market for a week, two weeks. And a lot of people go, oh, I don't care, Ninja, that's super fast. Why are you complaining? I'm all because there was a shift. And that's what we show you guys on this channel is when the shift happens. And what's great is you're able to see something in real time. And as you pay it, you know, you watch more and more, you listen and you watch these things happening in your own town. You're like, oh yeah, you know what? That, those homes were selling super fast and now they are on the market for a week or two. Well, what's that gonna do to, to buyer sediment? What's that gonna do to the, the, the psychology of a buyer? Well, what's wrong with it? And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. The cool thing is that we know that we're at rock bottom interest rates. Now we can go to negative, like I've explained, and that means the housing market will blow even more higher. The bubble will get bigger. The great news about negative interest rates from a real estate investor's perspective is now you know it ain't getting any worse. You can't get much worse than a 1%, 1.5% Fed's fund rate, which would probably translate with a good credit score. My best guess would be 1.5% for a 30-year fixed mortgage. Now, a lot of you guys say, oh, I would love to have that. Sure, if you're already in a home. But if you're going to buy a new home at that rate, you just need to know that if there's any little pin prick in the bubble, especially in the bond market, rates are going higher. And if rates go higher, nobody can pay for those homes at those inflated prices. All right? So we're going to finish this off here. Um, there's really nothing left, I guess. Ooh, clickbaity. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. See? This is this where, like, Ninja, you really need, you really, really need a uh, e editor. My editor's on vacation. That doesn't put much of a dent in deficit. Well, I, I hate to tell you, if your numbers are correct, 800,000, that adds 50% uh, available inventory to the market. And uh, with food prices uh, uh, rising and gas prices rising right now, I don't think you're gonna see a ton of uh, people running out to buy homes. Uh, we don't need clickbaity stories and opinions. 
If you want to help us, give us data that matters. So the great news is that I just read Brandon's opinion. This is good. I like it because we need opinions. We need thought-provoking conversation because uh, even if I'm wrong, and guys, I'm wrong a lot. And a lot of you are like, oh, I'm gonna click the button off. That's fine. It's totally fine. A lot of people have found value because um, we all have a piece of the puzzle. We don't, we're not always the crafters of the artwork that made the puzzle, but we've all got a piece. And when we come together and we bring that information and uh, in a truthful manner, in a loving manner, the puzzle gets built and things happen. All right, guys, with that being said, uh, please, hey, put your comments. Do you think the real estate market's going up? Do you think it's going down? Do you think the ninja's crazy? <sighs> How do you like the ninja's hair? How many times has the coffee exchanged hands? I'm like a magician. It was, it, it was literally just in this hand. I know, I, I just, editor, just, just, if I have my editor, I just, bah, 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 bah. All right, guys, with that being said, Economic Ninja is out. <laughs>